Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about spark plugs. We're going to get right over on the bench and we'll get right into it. So if you look down here at the bench, you're going to be able to see all these spark plugs. And yeah, it looks like a whole big mess, and it's true. But I wanted to show you a couple different ones. If you look along this one right here, you can see it has a beveled edge, a beveled edge. Then these ones have a flat edge with a little gasket in between. So of course, those are two different types of spark plugs. You want to pay special attention to that when you're purchasing spark plugs. If your engine has a beveled area where the spark plug's supposed to seat, then of course you need to have a beveled spark plug to seat into that area. If it's just a flat area, you took out a flat spark plug like this one, you'd want to of course replace it with one that looks like that. And if you put this in and you take it back out, and you try to put it back in again, that gasket's already been squished down and it's probably not gonna seat as well as it did originally. So once you put them in, make sure you torque them to specifications and then don't take them out until it's time for the next service interval. The next thing that's super important to pay attention to when you're looking at spark plugs is shank length. So if you were to hold these two up right next to each other, you're gonna notice that the threaded area is much longer on one rather than the other, right? And then of course the area where the electrode comes up to, you can see that that sits a lot higher on one compared to the other. That's gonna make a big difference inside that combustion chamber and it could also be detrimental to your engine if you have the wrong spark plug shank. The next thing you wanna think about with these spark plugs is to make sure that the electrodes are the same as the manufacturer recommended. What I mean by that, if you were to look right down here on the spark plug, you can see where the electrode comes out and then it's supposed to go over to this area, which of course would ground it out and it would make the spark complete its gap. If you had the wrong type of electrode there, it's gonna obviously cause an issue. You can see this one right here is much thicker than this one over there, right? It's also made out of a different material. The copper is very conductive, which is great. It's also the least expensive out of all the spark plugs, so that's also nice as well. Generally speaking, a copper spark plug will be in an older type of vehicle, like an older Dodge or something like that, but that's not limited to only that. Um, copper is, of course, a soft metal, so it's probably gonna wear out pretty fast, more than likely 20 to maybe 30,000 miles, you're gonna need to replace that. If you were to look at this one right here, you can see that that tip's obviously much smaller than the uh, copper one. This would be considered a, a platinum. So if you look at it, it's got a very little itty bitty tip on there, and that's platinum, okay? This whole thing right here isn't necessarily platinum, it would cost a million bucks for this, but just the teensiest little tip right there is actually platinum. And the platinum is of course more expensive than the copper. It's not as conductive as copper. It's a much harder metal than copper, but it's also more resistant to wear than the copper. So you can usually last between 60 and 100,000 miles, generally speaking. So now if you were to look over here, you would see the iridium spark plug. The iridium spark plug is by far the most expensive spark plug. Um, it's made out of a much different material. Iridium's more expensive than of course copper and probably even platinum. The tip is super fine, so it's gonna make a super controlled spark. It's not gonna be a spark that can jump over to here or to over there. It's gonna know exactly where to go. It's gonna go from here right over to that little itty bitty area that's right on that other electrode, okay? So it's gonna be super controlled. Uh, Iridium is a much harder material than we'll say the platinum or even the copper, of course, but they also typically last about 120,000 miles in the vehicles that it's applied for. So if your vehicle calls for Iridium, you need to use Iridium. You can't go ahead and use platinum. If your vehicle calls for platinum, you don't wanna use copper and you don't wanna use Iridium. You wanna go with what the vehicle manufacturer specifies. You might also notice that some spark plugs have a whole bunch of electrodes like something like this. I've seen them with two, I've seen them with four, and I think they even make them with six different electrodes, which, you know, people will say it's great, other people will say it's horrible. It's kind of your prerogative. You're gonna have to make up your own decision on that. Vehicle spark plugs also have different heat ranges, which is important to remember. Let's get into that now. So what I mean by spark plugs have different heat ranges is overall, your spark plug's gonna have the electrode that goes from one end through, right? You're gonna have the metal socket area that has the octagon on it so you can take it in and out. And you're also gonna have the ceramic area that actually protects that electrode from you know, heat and everything like that. It's gonna help with heat dissipation. And of course, insulating the spark from going any place that it's not supposed to go. Well, that ceramic actually comes in different lengths and it'll come out in different areas. Now, if you were to look at these two spark plugs, you can see this one right here has a lot more ceramic showing. So generally speaking, that might tell me that this spark plug would run a little bit hotter than something like this. And of course, if it ran hotter, it would have a little less heat dissipating attributes than maybe something with a little less uh, porcelain exposed. 
the hotter the plug, the more porcelain is going to be exposed. Which of course is super useful for applications such as using maybe nitrous or something like that. Now for most passenger vehicles, we're not going to be running nitrous. So, in my opinion, I would go right into that book and I would look for my manufacturer's specific plug. So now if you were to look at your owner's manual, you can open it right up and more than likely you're going to find something that says maintenance and it's going to tell you something about a service interval. For this particular vehicle, I went ahead and I found it. It's telling me that it wants the spark plugs replaced every 27,000 miles, which also pretty much indicates to me more than likely it's probably a copper plug. You can look and see spark plug again, and it should tell you the recommended gap for the specific engine you have. When you're gapping your spark plugs, it's important to make sure you stay within the range. We'll show you that now. Now, if you look over here, you're gonna see multiple tools that you can use to gap your spark plugs. And essentially, this one isn't really for gapping spark plugs, but it can be used if you just do a little bit of um, addition. You'll be able to put together something that'll come up with the right gap. This one right here is my favorite to use. And then of course you have this, and you can tell that they have numbers all over them that you'd want to match up with your manufacturer's specific gap. So if your spark plug said that it should have a 0.035 gap, you'd want to come right in at that 0.035. Now if you were going to try to use something like this, obviously it has preset numbers. So if you were trying to put this in, try to figure out where it's at, you'd have to keep going around and just figure it out. Something like this, of course, is much easier because you can just go right around. And then I would notice that the gap is at 0.07, which in all honesty, that's a really huge gap. Some vehicles do require a large gap, other vehicles require less of a gap, um, and it really all comes down to the manufacturer and what they recommend. Continuing on with my favorite spark plug tool here, let's say you have to check this gap and you notice that it's not the right gap, right? This is huge. We'll say it's a newer spark plug. Why might it be like that? Well, maybe it just got bent. If you needed to, you could try to press this down a little bit. You can give it a couple light bonks with your tool, like that, and just try to press this down until it gets to the manufacturer's specification. If it's under spec, you could use that little hole right there. You come under and you just kind of pull and you'll notice that it'll spread the electrodes apart. You just want to be careful not to go too far when you do that. You can do that with something like a uh, copper spark plug like this. I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to gap your spark plug if you had a platinum tip or even if you had an iridium tip. If you have either of those, the last thing you want to do is be running a piece of metal in between those two. You risk damaging the spark plug. Now, some of the things you might find when you replace your spark plug is if you were to wipe off all the dirt and debris, you might see like a line that looks like it's coming up or even across. If you see that line, that's potentially a crack right there. If you have a crack, more than likely moisture can make its way inside there and it's going to cause a major running issue. The spark's going to be able to come out through the ceramic, which is supposed to be the insulator, and it could ground out up against something else, such as this right here, which would go to your engine, or if you have a spark plug wire or coil over it, and you might especially notice a misfire condition with a crack like this if it's moist outside. So unfortunately, I don't have a great example of it, but if you were to look at the electrode here, you might notice that that's worn away. It might be worn at an angle. See how this is nice and flat? Sometimes they're worn at a severe angle, and that spark just kind of jumps over here, or maybe it jumps over there, or it can kind of do whatever. It needs to have a nice fine point where that spark can jump straight over to. So now let's talk about the tools. We already talked about the gapper. Gapper is one of my favorite tools when it comes to spark plugs and you need to have one. You want to also look along to see what you've got for spark plug type of sockets. And what I mean by that is you need to have a socket that actually has a little rubber grommet down deep inside there. All right. If you don't have a rubber grommet in there and you're trying to use just a regular plain old socket, more than likely you're going to have a broken spark plug situation where it might look like this or it might be something a little less apparent like that spark plug I showed you that had the cracks going down the side. Take it, you can put it in there. You notice that the spark plug really doesn't move around very much and it doesn't want to fall out, okay? If I was to use that plain old socket, come on. Unbelievable. Well, you get the point. Basically, the spark plug can just keep falling out. With all that said, you have tools that should be used for doing spark plugs, and then you have tools that maybe will work, but maybe they shouldn't be used for doing spark plugs. So now we're gonna talk about the use of lubricants when it comes to spark plugs. Sometimes people like to use something called copper never seize, or some sort of never seize along the threaded area. I'm gonna say that that's your prerogative, but overall, it's not something that I would recommend one bit. Something that I would recommend using is dielectric grease, and where I would use that is right here. 
Whether you're using a coil or you're going to be replacing your wires, you would put a little bit of dielectric grease right up along here. Boop, boop, boop. Then you would take your spark plug and you would be able to slide it in there nice and easy, right? I didn't put any on there yet, so you're gonna see what happens. Let's assume I drove this thing for a long period of time. It got super hot all inside here. This boot's gonna get stiff and brittle. It's gonna come time to take off the spark plug wire or boot or coil or whatever you've got. And you're not gonna be able to get it off, all right? Obviously that's no fun for anybody. Another reason for using the dielectric grease would be it's gonna help keep moisture out. If you, have, if you don't have a good seal along where your wire connects onto here and moisture wicks its way up inside there, you're gonna have a misfire in a running condition for sure. So, to make it easy, you have your spark plug inside your engine. It's torqued and seated the way that it should be. You would take a little bit of this dielectric grease, put it right on that tip, and then slide it right over your spark plug, just like that. Now when it comes time, that's gonna come right out. Okay friends, so we tried to make a nice informational video for you about spark plugs. Hopefully you learned something along the way. If you did, leave it in the comment section. While you're at it, drop me a like and subscribe. While you're still here, why don't you ring that bell? That way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Woo! Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.